So this year marks the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. It only felt like yesterday when we were celebrating the 10th anniversary, heck even the 20th, but as of March 2024, LEGO has released the first wave of what is to be many 25th anniversary branded sets throughout this year. You'll know they're a part of the celebration if they have this specific box art, which features shiny chrome Lego pieces with a slightly blue tint to them, which is a unique style and twist to the Lego Star Wars box art branding that we've seen over the last five years or so. I really like it. The first thing that came to mind was the classic Lego Star Wars games, seeing the shiny Lego that only bounty hunters could explode. And then you could also argue that maybe the chrome resembles classic Lego Star Wars exclusive figures like chrome C-3PO, Darth Vader, heck, even the silver stormtrooper. Maybe even a throwback to the silver lines of previous classic box art. Point is, Lego nailed the nostalgic factor here. Sadly though, 18 plus branded sets don't get the same treatment and instead just get a 25th anniversary logo on the corner of the box art. Kind of disappointing. But today's focus is on these two sets. Round one of what is to be a bigger wave for 2024, the first being a cheaper scaled down R2-D2 with a retail price of $100. And then we have the more interesting boarding the Tanto 4 at $55, both of which Lego has sent over for me to review. Each set has one thing in common here. They come with an exclusive 25th anniversary minifigure as basically an extra. The figures have nothing to do with the sets themselves and instead provide an opportunity for LEGO Star Wars to include characters in minifigure form that we've never seen before. Now, unlike the 20th anniversary celebration figures that we got in 2019, these aren't just remakes of classic characters with like a 25th or 20th anniversary print on the back of them. They're just normal figures that you would see in any other set. This is definitely a plus to me. While I definitely enjoyed the nostalgia of the classic figures getting remaked in 2019, this feels super unique for LEGO Star Wars and something fans should get excited about. Now the choices made for which characters to include as 25th anniversary minifigures are a completely different story. It's also worth mentioning that both sets do have stickers, not very many prints if at all, but just wanted to point that out. First, taking a look at R2-D2, this set has 1,050 pieces, features an R2-D2 minifigure right alongside a printed plaque, some accessories, which we'll get to in a minute, and Darth Malak being the exclusive 25th anniversary figure. For those of you who don't know, Malak comes from the Old Republic, and if you might remember, LEGO did make some shortly lived sets based on the games and lore, like the Sith Fury Class Interceptor featuring one of the greatest LEGO Star Wars figures ever made, at least in my opinion, Darth Malgus. We even saw sets like the Republic Striker Class Starfighter, the Jedi Defender Class Cruiser, heck, LEGO even made a battle pack from the Old Republic. These sets were only on the shelves between 2012 to 2013, but are some of the most cherished amongst collectors nowadays, myself included. Darth Malak couldn't have been a better choice as a random 25th anniversary character to reignite nostalgia in the LEGO Star Wars community. The LEGO Star Wars team has told me that these figures are purposely chosen as characters that wouldn't make sense for a dedicated set at this point in time. More on that later. Back to R2-D2, the build itself is basically a scaled down version of the UCS one. Yes, I know, technically it's not a UCS set, but the original was, so in my mind it is. Shockingly though, both R2-D2 sets are available at the same time, a very strange move from LEGO. There is a considerable size, piece count, feature, and of course price difference between the two models, and after completing the build, it's clear to me why LEGO Star Wars in the past has built the R2-D2 a lot bigger with a more expensive version of the iconic droid. There is a lot of sacrifices being made here to hit that specific price point of $100, but were they the right trade-offs? While the R2 model looks like the droid, the features don't compare to the more expensive Brethren. You have to manually switch out accessories to add functionality, they're not brick built into the model with gears or fun tricks. I will say this does feel like old LEGO Star Wars, which I'm kind of okay with. I do believe there is a market for a cheaper LEGO R2-D2 as a display model, not as a toy to play around with, which is pretty counterintuitive, but this set serves that purpose well. You can't retract the third leg, it's not built as well in terms of the techniques to the $240 set, but it looks like R2-D2. I like it actually, more than I expected. 
Personally, it should be an $80 set. Even with 1,000 plus pieces, it doesn't feel as valuable at that price point. Of course, you're getting that amazing Darth Malak 25th anniversary figure, but that shouldn't be a penalty to fans to charge more. A lot of people will buy this set for the figure alone, it's smart marketing, but it really takes advantage of the fandom. It almost feels like a morally gray area, and I honestly don't know how I feel about it. There's been rumors that later this year we'll have a scaled, brick-built C-3PO to go alongside this R2-D2, and if that's true, this set will make a lot more sense in the lineup, but as of now, it's a weird oddity. Next, we have Boarding the Tanta 4. This set launches alongside the mini scale set of the same ship, which is pretty cool actually, and I did like that set, though I did think it was too pricey for what you're getting. Featuring six minifigures and actually a seventh 25th anniversary figure, at $55, this set is looking pretty good in terms of value alone. Darth Vader, two Stormtroopers, two Rebellion Troopers, and Captain Antilles rounds out the lineup perfectly depicting one of the most iconic opening battles in cinema. The hallway is a similar build style to 75324 Dark Trooper Attack, and that's okay to me. In fact, this is better than that set. While it costs more, the build itself is extremely ingenious. You'll find functioning doors to open and close a hatch, a fun easter egg from Rogue One of the Switch launching the Tanta 4 away from the Imperials, and multiple of what I call flippers to launch your Imperials and Rebel soldiers into oblivion. I had a lot of fun playing with this set, way more than I thought. The wall details are excellent for the scale and size. I found the build to be straightforward and relaxing, not to mention that this set has a Technic brick at the end to match a second boarding hallway to the set if you want to expand it at an additional $55, of course. Point is, I love this set. I think it's an almost perfect LEGO Star Wars playset. Why almost perfect then, David? Well, we've got to talk about the 25th anniversary figure, Art Trooper 5s. This seventh figure comes with a printed 4x6 plate tile with 25th anniversary branding on it, just like Darth Malak, and acts as the second figure in the lineup of 25th anniversary figures, which is part of presumably a larger wave or waves of figures to come. Now, remember what I said earlier that the LEGO Star Wars team chose characters that were unlikely to receive a set that would justify their appearance? Well, that just gets all thrown out of the window with fives. I'm not here to rant, but I can definitely think of 10 Clone War sets off the top of mind that would perfectly justify fives. How about a remake of the Separatist Shuttle with Fives and Echo from the Citadel arc? Or maybe another Umbara base set? Maybe something from Ringo Vinda? Heck, maybe even a clone turbo tank. Just throw Fives in. The character would work in just about anything from the Clone Wars universe. If LEGO can find a spot for Vice Admiral Salone, they can definitely do the same for Fives. I think a more niche clone character like 99, Dogma, Echo, or heck, even the arc version of Jesse would make more sense. Regardless, I'm so happy to finally have an official LEGO version of one of my favorite Clone Trooper characters. That is until you see this helmet. I don't have a big issue with helmet holes like other YouTubers, but the printing of the Rishi Eel from the iconic Rookies episode is just pathetic. Customizers for years have been able to accurately print a Phase 2 5's helmet. The separation between the graphic just throws the design completely off to me. Thankfully, the figure is partially redeemed by its excellent arm printing, second time ever for a clone trooper since Phase 2 Rex from the UCS Venator of last year, and I really enjoy that LEGO finally made a proper pauldron. FYI, use a plate and crease the sides slightly for best results. Please don't put this on flat. I, I just despise when people do that. I'm sorry. Sadly, Fives has no cloth waist cape matching Rex of last year, but that can be easily remedied by using a third-party cape, link down in the description. The backpack matches the 2012 one featured on the Phase 1.5 or Hybrid Arc Trooper, which still looks so good even a decade later. Fives also has a specific head print with the number 5 tattooed on the corner, a very nice attention to detail, so it's not all bad with this figure. So is the helmet printing on this figure a deal breaker? No, 
but I know LEGO can do better. For me, it's just frustrating that LEGO would consider this to be a rare character that they seemingly couldn't fit into a future Clone Wars set. That's really the bigger issue to me. I sincerely hope the rest of the 25th anniversary line of figures to come in 2024 are more in line with Darth Malak and less like Arc Trooper 5s. So that's why boarding the Tanta 4 is almost perfect. A better 25th anniversary minifigure choice would have changed my opinion. Any other rare type of clone cheaper than 5s. I still recommend the set though, as is. It's really a brilliant execution. If you include the three Starship Collection LEGO Star Wars sets, all five come under $100, which is rare to see nowadays from LEGO. I think we're off to a pretty strong start. While it's not perfect and there's certainly a few hiccups, I look forward to what comes next for the LEGO Star Wars 25th anniversary.